to another episode of Mountain Center Garage. Today we're going to be talking about the Adapt Clutch. In one of our previous Articat episodes a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the different clutches that came on the different Articat sleds over about the last 20 years. Since this new Adapt Clutch came out on the 2022s last year to replace the previous team clutches, um, we've been pretty excited about this. It weighs less. One cell that we put this on last year seemed to perform a lot better. We didn't get a ton of testing on it with different sleds, but it seems like it actually works a little bit better. I don't know if that's because it weighs a pound less or because of just how it's engineered, but it seems to be so far be a pretty dang good clutch to replace the older ones. So if you want to put a new Adapt Clutch on your 16 through 2022 Articats, this is what this video is made for. So right here we have the 16 and 17 team clutch. This does not have the uh, non-adjustable um, belt deflection like the 18s and newer came with. That's this clutch. This clutch can replace either of those. This can replace any of the mountain sled clutches from 16 to current. You can also put it on the older models that came on the previous Pro Climbs from 12 to 15. Um, it takes a couple of extra things, but we're just going to cover the 16 and newer ones in this video. What you're going to need, the first thing you need is a clutch. The clutch is part number 07. 46933. Depending on where you buy this from, it's called an uncalibrated clutch because it comes with a spring, but it doesn't come with any clutch weights. It comes with the rollers and everything else, but you have to buy the clutch weights separately. It's called uncalibrated. Somewhere 750 to 800 bucks, depending on where you buy it from. Um, that's the first thing you need. Now, to install this, you're going to need what's called the Flyweight Hardware Kit. Now, this kit comes with everything you need to install your flyweight in here, but it doesn't come with the weights. The kit comes with three flyweight pins and the screw to hold the pin in place comes with three of those. And it also comes with the flyweight washers. So it will come with six washers, three pins, and three screws in order for you to put your Articat flyweight in place in this clutch. You can buy flyweights from anywhere. Um, you can buy the Articat ones. They have for our altitude, we've been using the 58s and the 60s on stock machines, and we ride around 10,000 feet in Utah. Uh, you'll just have to figure out kind of what weights you need. Another really good weight we've used in these is the Bikeman Sniper Weights. has been a really good weight. Um, so you just have to decide what you want for weights. The factory weights are about 35 bucks a piece, so you need three of them. The Flyweight Kit, the part number is 8639454. The Flyweight Kit is about $38, $40, depending on where you buy it from, so you're going to need that, you're going to need weights. Now, the last thing you're going to need to put this Adapt Clutch on your 16 to 22 machine is you're going to need a clutch bolt. You have two options here. You can use your stock clutch bolt that comes out of your 16 to 22. This clutch bolt is a little bit longer, so what you need, you need the 2022 spacer. This spacer is part number 2623325, it costs about $9 and you can use this on the clutch bolt that comes, like I said, on your 16 to 22. Your other option is you can keep this little spacer that goes came on your 16 to 22 clutch bolt, and you can get the 2023 clutch bolt. Interestingly enough, this little spacer costs $6. Um, this clutch bolt that comes on the 16 to 23 is about $27. The new clutch bolt that comes on the 2023 that's shorter than this is part number 2623308. And that new clutch bolt's only 12 bucks. So if you keep your old spacer, the new clutch bolt that's only $12, it's only $12. So probably the better way to go is to get the new clutch bolt, not do the spacer, because the spacer's $9 anyway. So anyway, you have two options there. You should either use the longer clutch bolt with the spacer, the 2023 bolt with your old little spacer, uh, and uh, using one of those two options. So today we're gonna install using this because that's what I have. I don't, the 2023 bolt wasn't available when I made this video. So we're gonna do what we did all last year so using the longer clutch bolt. All right, so now a little close up of our adapt clutch. There's a spring in here. If you pull all the bolts out of this cover, it's gonna spring open. So make sure you hold this real tight. And the CAT service manual it recommends anytime you're working the springs to wear safety goggles, which is actually a pretty good idea. Now I've already pulled almost all the bolts out. I leave these two inks. If you're doing this by yourself, it's easier to hold one side down. And then you can loosen those two bolts and you can kind of slowly let that spring take the tension off the spring. This clutch is marked with yellow there, yellow there, yellow there. So you know, you want to make sure that this goes back on 
the exact same place you took it off. You don't want to turn it one notch because this is whole clutch assembly is balanced. And if you put this on wrong, it could throw your balance off a little bit. So make sure either mark this yourself with a with a sharpie, mark it here, mark it here, mark it there, so everything goes back in the same place, or just make sure your mark is on it. Okay, so we're going to take the cover off, take our spring out. Now this comes with an 85 to 25 rate spring. Our clutch is really easy. We can actually get to the spot here where the weights go in pretty easily. Now that we've pulled it apart. Now we need three things. We're going to have these little spacers that go in on either side of the weight. We need the pin and then we also need the screw that hold it in. So we need those four things. Now there's a special way that these go in. You can kind of see that they have a short side and a long side. You want to make sure you get that right. So I'm just going to show you here. So this is going to go around just like that. I put a little grease on it just so it would hold it in place. You can see where that is, how it fits down in there. And there's going to be one of those on both sides. So you have to make sure you get both of those in there. Now one of the one of the easy ways I've found to hold this whole unit together as you're putting it in is you can put it together like this. Then if you put a big magnet on it, that kind of holds the whole unit together. So you can kind of just drop it down in there as a unit and then you can kind of just Get your pin. Now the pin has two things. There's threads on one side and then there's an Allen hole or where an Allen wrench goes on another. A five millimeter Allen wrench goes on this hole. The threads go to this side, the Allen hole goes to that side. So we're going to put it in from here. You need to get everything, all those little holes lined up in the spacer, the weight that is in. Now we're going to put our five millimeter Allen head on there. On this end of this, there's a 30 Torx. This already has a really nice lock washer on it, but just in case, I put just a teeny dab of uh, blue Loctite on it, because that's just one thing, one thing you want to worry about coming out of there. Now, when these are done, there's a torque for this. The torque is, you're going to want an inch pounds torque wrench. The torque is 50 inch pounds. So I've already got this torque wrench set. Okay, now we're torqued all the way down to 50 inch pounds. Flyweight moves freely. We want to make sure that moves freely like that. Everything closes and now we're good. We'll put the rest of the weights in this. Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to put the spring back in. And I'm just going to put this where my yellow marks are because that was easiest. Yellow mark, yellow mark, and then my yellow mark. And I'm going to lift this back up like this. Hold it down. Now I've had this, my clutch set on the lowest setting because there's also, there's also a torque for these bolts, which is 13 foot pounds. So after we get all these in, now we got all the top bolts down. We're going to torque these to 13 and we'll do our head. We'll torque all those across. We wanted to do to torque these in the crisscross pattern. So you'll torque that one and that one, that one and that one, and then that one and that one or kind of however you think you do it. But once those are all torqued down 13 inch pounds, we got all this back together, we can go ahead and put it on the machine. Okay, now this is our 16. Remember the 16 and the 17 came with the same clutch. This was the first year the team of the team clutch came on the 16, had the team primary and also the team secondary. Now the team secondary on the 16 and 17 is different than the 18 and newer is because you were supposed to have belt deflection with this little bolt right here. So in order to put, or the non belt deflection primary clutch on here, we need to move, remove this adjuster. 13 millimeter bolt, loosen that. We're going to take this out, probably put it somewhere where we know it is in case we ever want to go back to the way we came, but we're going to put that back on here. We're going to put our primary clutch on. You want to make sure your crankshaft is nice and clean and smooth, it doesn't have debris or grease or anything on it, so you get a good surface between your clutch and your crankshaft. So clean that off really well. And then your clutch is going to go in there. Here is the bolt we can, that came out of this. We're going to take the old spacer off. We're going to put our new spacer on. Put that in like that. Now, again, I have this set to the very lowest clutch setting, so it's just going to barely do it finger tight. Just like that. And we're going to come back and torque that in a minute. Now, before we go any further, we're going to put our belt on. Let's see. And we'll always put our belt on 
so we can read the Articat when we're sitting here that way you know it goes on the same way every single time now since I've already had my secondary off I'm just gonna put this up in there it makes it a lot easier now I'm not going to torque everything down here because I gotta take this clutch off and show you how this goes on the 18 but um, we're going to torque this down, we'll torque this bolt down. You want to get your torque wrench out. Service manual says to torque this to 51 foot-pounds. It says to do that first when it's cold. Start it up, let the engine warm up for a couple of minutes, then retorque it again to 51 because things, as things seat when your engine heats up, um, it might move a little bit. Remember this is a torque 60 that goes in your clutch bolt. And that's as simple as it is on the 16. The only thing you really have to do is remove that belt flexion adjustment screw that goes in your secondary clutch. Otherwise, this is essentially the same secondary clutch that come on the 18 and newer. It just those clutches just didn't have this bolt in it. Okay, now let's go over to the 18. We'll do the same thing on the 18. And we'll show you how to pretty much install this on the 18 in the same way we just showed you on the 16. We're going to use our stock bolt that we took off this 18. We're going to take the stock spacer off it that came on it. We're going to put our new spacer on that we bought. Like I said, you can use the 2023 bolt. It's a little bit shorter, so you don't need to use the spacer, but you have to use the little $6 washer that goes on it. So we're gonna put this in here. It's so much nicer. These clutches fit down here so much easier just because they're a little bit narrower. This uses the same 60 torque bits as all the other ones. Now we're just, we're not gonna screw this down real tight this time. We're just gonna do it gently. Let the clutch do its job. Then we'll torque this down to the 51 foot-pounds that it's supposed to be. Now we can put our belt on. Remember the belt also has arrows right here that point towards the front of the saddle. You can see it on this belt too really nicely This because this belt's a little bit dirty. We're just going to slip the belt on, put it back here into the secondary clutch. Now when you do this, you want to make sure your spacers that go on the clutch here are in place. We're going to show you in just a minute how to space these to do your clutch alignment. But we'll just put this on. Now, if you have your tool that screws in here, you can put the belt on that way too if you want, but this way, it just, it just seems a little bit easier for me to just do this. Now we have our team clutch off and our new adapt clutch on. We've got our team secondary on, the one that came on this. We're gonna torque both these down. Then we're gonna show you how to set the clutch alignment on this. Now, the clutch alignment that we show you is going to be the same for this 8, the 18, and all the newer sleds that have a roller bearing clutch. Also, if you put a roller bearing clutch on your 16 or 17, the clutch alignment that we're going to show you here is would be the same for the 16 that we just put the, these same clutches on. So follow along as we do the clutch alignment. Now we're here with our 18. We've got our adapt clutch torqued down. We've got our secondary clutch torqued down. We've got our belt on. Now we're going to show you how to adjust clutch alignment on this. We don't have to adjust the belt deflection because it's auto adjust. See how tight that belt is? It's right where it's supposed to be. It's up here about three sixteenths of an inch out of the secondary. Well, our clutch alignment is so important on this is we don't want the belt touching the primary sheath either on this side or that side because what that will do, it will make your belt squeal or it will start turning your secondary clutch like this. Now I'm just going to show you on this other clutch kind of so you can hopefully understand that a little bit. So this is our clutch. We don't want the belt touching this sheath or this sheath that rests. We want it resting right here on the bearing that's right there. So I'm just going to exaggerate this a little bit. So we kind of want our belt right in the center. If you can see that like that, we don't want it over here touching that sheath or over here touching that sheath because it's either going to squeal or turn the belt and turn the track sitting at rest at idle. So how we do that is we're used to doing this with some kind of an alignment bar. Cardicat used to make an alignment bar when the team clutches first came out for the 16s and 17s, but they don't make one for this. This is a little bit different. If you want to look up this procedure, it's in the service manual, or you can get the service manual at Country Cat in their service section. They have like every service manual in there for every make, model, and year. They also have the operator's manual, and they go through in the service manual on page 112 on how to do this procedure. So if you want to look it up on your own and read through it before you do it, that's fine. I'm going to go through it kind of quickly right here so you get a pretty good understanding of it. But the first thing you want you to do is you need to elevate the rear of your sled off the ground so the track can turn. 
But you don't want anything behind this because the track turns a little bit, could flip something up. You don't want a car back there. It's going to flick a rock at or break a windshield or hit someone that's behind you. So make sure the back of it's clear and so you don't hit anything there. Make sure it's secure because if you don't want the track spinning and then falling over and lunching forward or something. But you really don't really need to spin the track really heavily on this. You just need to be able to start it and engage the clutch and then let off. That's what we're going to do first. So we're going to start the engine. We're going to engage the clutch a little bit, let the track turn a couple of times, and then we're going to let off the gas and let the system come to a rest and turn off the engine and then set the emergency brake. All right, so we're going to start our engine. You can see where we're at rest. The clutch is kind of engaged in turning the secondary sheath, and it's also turning the track. Now, we're supposed to start the engine rev it up enough that the track engages, but you can see our track was already engaged. So it says that once you turn it off to set the emergency brake, which we got on, turn it on again and see if the belt squeals. Now the belt's not squealing, but if I take the emergency brake off, look what else, we don't want it to do that. So even though, even though the belt's not squealing, I know that the belt's over to one side too far and rubbing on the sheath and that's what's causing everything to turn and so are these clutches out of alignment? Even though the belt's not squealing, it might just be because this is an older belt, it's a little bit worn, so it's not going to squeal, but we don't want it, when it's at rest like this, we don't want it turning the secondary clutch and having so much engagement here that it's also got enough grip on the belt that it's turning the track. So what we're going to do, we're going to show you where the adjustment shims are on this and we're going to take some shims out and see if we can fix that. So we're going to take this bolt off. Now we just, all we need to do is take off the movable sheath on the clutch. Now right here, there's some shims. Now these shims come in different sizes. I've got two shims in here and let's look at these for a second. We've got one shim that is 90 thousandths and we've got one shim that is 30 thousandths. Now they make four different thicknesses of these shims. They make a 15 thousandths, a 30 thousandths, a 60 thousandths, and a 90 thousandths. And we'll put all these on here so you know which ones are which and which part numbers to order if you want to get a variation of different ones. Since I was looking at this, on this clutch, if I looked on here, my belt was over too far this way. This is exaggerated, but it was rubbing on this sheath here. So what I need to do, I need to move this movable sheath in, and that's gonna push the belt away from the movable sheath on the clutch. So I'm gonna take out the thicker washer, and I'm just gonna leave, I'm gonna take out the 90 thousandths and just leave the 30 thousandths in there, and we'll see what that does for us on our alignment. Now we got this put back together, we got this torqued down, we're going to start it, let it turn the track a little bit, let it come to a stop, set our emergency brake again, and then restart it and kind of see where we're at again, go through the whole process again. We're going to rev it up enough that we engage the belt, and then we're going to let it come to a stop, turn the engine off, so now we got our belt back up here where it's supposed to be, it's tight again. We're going to set the emergency brake like it says to do in the, in the manual, and we're going to start this thing up again. Take off the emergency brake. So now this is where we're at. The belt is... I'll turn that off so you can hear me talk. Now the belt this time, with the brake off, it wasn't turning the clutch. So we know now that this belt is more right in the middle of the sheaths. It's not too far one way or too far this way. Because if this touches the sheath, it's going to want to rotate the belt and rotate the secondary clutch. So now we know that our alignment is pretty dang close. Because if we, and we just have a 30,000 shim in there, we took the 60,000 or the 90,000 shim out. And the other thing it talks about in the service manual is we want to measure the, the clearance between the belt and the sheath. And it talks about getting a feeler gauge and with a 
10,000 speeder gauge. I'm just going to show you on this one. You want to measure in between the belt and the sheath. The, this is the stationary sheath, this is the movable sheath. On the stationary sheath, you want this to be about 10 thousandths. You don't want it to be enough that it's touching, but you want about 10 thousandths there. You want space on both sides when you measure this. And with these shims, either adding or taking out shims, you can adjust where that belt sits in between your sheaths here and there and move it back and forth a little bit. That's how you adjust the clutch alignment with either the team primary clutch that has the bearing here on the shaft or the adapt clutch with the bearing here on the shaft. Either clutch that has the no adjust belt deflection. And look, you can see our belt super tight. We got the belt up here about where it's supposed to be, riding clear up high out of the secondary clutch. All right, so that's how you install the adapt clutch on your 16 through 22 Articat sled that didn't originally come with it. Been a pretty good clutch this year. Um, we don't really know how well it's gonna hold up because we're only a year into it. Not all the sleds came with it last year. so. I'm hoping this holds up better than the team clutch with the roller bearing has held up. We've had a lot of those come apart. Um, if you have any questions about installing this on your sled, message me and let me know. I'll see if I can answer them as best I can. Was pretty excited to go to Hay Days last week and it was really kind of cool to see the new Catalyst chassis. Up close and personal, it's way cooler in person, I gotta say. Um, there's a lot of really little bits and details of seeing it in person that you don't really see from the videos and pictures that have come out on the social media since then, but seeing it in person was really cool. And we're going to see a lot of really cool things come out from Articat in the next six months when we get to our Ride the Catalyst chassis um, next winter. So pretty excited about that. I think Articat's heading in, in a really good direction. If you're a longtime Articat fan like I am, um, I'm really excited about what's going on with Articat right now, where the direction we're heading in. The last couple of years have been kind of lackluster, but I think we're going to see some really exciting things coming up in the next couple of years. So I'm just going to finish off by saying, the clutch alignment is going to be adjusted the same whether you have a 16 through 22 or 23 sled as long as you have the, a roller bearing clutch. Now whether you have the adapt roller bearing clutch or the team roller bearing clutch, that clutch alignment process is going to be the same as long as you have a roller bearing clutch or whether your sled is a 16 through 23. So use that process if you have one of those machines. If you don't have a roller bearing clutch, the, the clutch alignment process is a little different. We're going to make a video on that here coming up in the next few weeks. So. Um, if you want that video, just check back between now and the time winter comes, and hopefully we can get that done for you in the next couple of weeks. Pretty excited about this winter coming up. The forecasts have been looking pretty good, especially for uh, Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana. And maybe we'll see you guys out on the trails this year. This is Rich from Mountain Slitter Garage signing off. Until next time, remember to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the YouTube channel so we can keep these videos coming. You can't, you can't resist fresh snow, can you?